Hey everybody, welcome to Disrupt It Yourself. Let's try this again because believe it or not, I just did this entire video and it wasn't recording. So maybe this tick will be better. Um, anyway, so thank you guys all for being incredibly patient with me. I know I've done a couple videos where I've talked a little bit about what's going on and what my plans are, set expectations, but the good news is now it's time for me to actually fulfill some of those. I'll be doing at least one video a week, so that means you can hold me to that, and I will actually be shooting for two. So you'll see a lot more content from me. I've been reaching out to a lot of companies that I am interested in, the products that I'm interested in, and um, trying to get some interesting things so that I can learn more and so that I can show you guys more. I also um, have a little bit more time and flexibility so that I can work on some of that kind of stuff as well. Today's video is on a material, PLA PHA blends. Now I'm a huge fan. If you follow me on Instagram you'll know that because I've been printing with that stuff a lot. What I've been using lately is PLA PHA from a manufacturer called Meltink. Uh, this is great material and I have been able to get to know the, the manufacturer of this material pretty well. He makes great stuff and he has a lot of experience with the machinery a lot of experience and it shows in his product so I recommend if anyone hasn't tried it I'll go ahead and throw up a link here and go ahead and, and give it a shot it's cheap you can actually get samples as well if you're interested um, or just go ahead and buy a spool because it's much more representative of the quality because you can do decent sized print not have to stress over coils but I really recommend it maybe like just take my word for it um, and this is how it comes um, this is definitely not my first spool, but it comes in a nice little box. It's very affordable. I think it's like $35, and in fact, if you go on Amazon, you can find it there. If you're uh, a Prime member, then you can get free shipping too, which I highly recommend. But yeah, so I recommend trying this stuff out. This is um, Melting's PLA PHA blend. This particular one is Cool Gray, which I really like. It's basically white with just like a little bit of gray in it. Um, it looks really cool when you print with it. But one of the reasons I like this material so much is it prints really similarly to uh, PLA. Uh, your settings aren't going to change much. I am a little more hesitant with the blend to use uh, active cooling, but still that depends on the print. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what to do or what not to do, but just kind of give you an idea of what I've done. Um, I will use it a lot of times instead of PLA on most prints. Um, I still obviously have a lot of PLA, but one of the things I like about it is that it's pretty similar, and you'll hear other people say this, it's kind of similar to ABS in a lot of ways, but better too in, in many others. It's kind of like a nice middle ground. It definitely doesn't crack or warp the way ABS does, which you're going to love if you've ever printed with ABS. Um, the print temperatures are very similar to PLA. I actually print pretty hot with it on my machines, but it varies from machine to machine. I print usually around 220, maybe even 225. Um, but the reason it's such a great material, to me, in my opinion, is because it's very workable. You can really sand these blends down and polish them up. So I'll start with like already a pretty fine grit sandpaper and then work up to an even higher one on like a sanding block and I'll uh, do a wet sand so I'll actually get the part a little bit wet and sand it. So you kind of get a bit of almost a polish out of it and you get a really fine um, surface. And the reason I'll do that is on parts that I want to paint because then I can get it nice and smooth, really kind of eliminate the lines. Um, I did that with the Pi Girl 2. PLA has more of a tendency to kind of um, whiten a little bit when you sand it and you get kind of that residue. ABS is a little bit more like this, but even then, I don't generally work with it that way. I really recommend this as kind of a workable material. So, and it'll depend what you're printing, if you'll want to use it or not. But that's what I'm liking it for. I don't really go crazy on the heated bed because it's not really needed. It doesn't have a lot of shrinkage. I do recommend printing with blue painter's tape. We are going to do a video soon um, about build surfaces, print surfaces and where I'll talk about that a little bit more, but I've lately just found that my uh, best results are with Blue Painter's Tape. There might be some upcoming things that'll change my opinion on that. I'm working with someone and we'll see um, if there's some good ideas. I've talked to Noe and Pedro at Adafruit a little bit about it as well. They're big fans um, and we'll see what they think about what surface to print on. Like I said, go ahead and try it out. Let me know what you think. The next video that we're going to do 
is going to be a question and answer, and we're going to do that early next week. Go ahead and leave me a comment. Let me know what kind of questions you'd like me to answer. Uh, it can be anything, really, and I'll just answer what I think are the best ones to fill up the time. And then the video after that should be the one about um, print surfaces, where I'm really going to focus on one in particular, but I can't talk about it too much just yet. So yeah, let me know what you think, and you'll start seeing a lot more content. Let me know what other videos you'd like me to do, and keep on making awesome stuff, guys.